Hi there everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So in today's video I'm going to attempt to turn sodium metal, as I have here in this bottle, into potassium metal. And to do that I'm going to react it with potassium chloride. Now normally potassium is actually more reactive than sodium, which is why potassium is so much more expensive, difficult to ship, and difficult to store. Sodium is much cheaper and easier to get than potassium is, but it's also way less reactive. Now, in order to get the sodium to react with the potassium, I need to induce a phase change in order to cause the reaction to shift towards the potassium metal. And the way I'm going to do that is by reacting it together at 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, the potassium, once it forms, will actually vaporize and I can distill it off. You see what's happening is the sodium is going to react with the potassium chloride and it's going to form sodium chloride and potassium metal. Now that reaction normally would favor the potassium, but since I'm doing it at such high temperature that any potassium that forms is going to immediately go off and be distilled. So that's the idea. Let's see if I can do it. As you can see, I've already drilled a hole in this uh, pipe cap here. This will be my reaction vessel. I'm going to weld this into the end of that. I'm going to stick this in my furnace. And I curve this out and it'll be my condenser. So here's the top to my distillation apparatus. You can see I opted to actually braze it closed instead of welding it. Because welding on this thin metal tube is very difficult. And if I get it hot enough to melt the brass, I've also got it hot enough to boil the sodium. Which I don't want to do, so I'm planning on keeping it lower than that temperature anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, I've got this coming down into a glass bottle with some mineral oil, and uh, hopefully that cork will keep that tight and not let any air leak in. So this is going to go into my furnace here, that way I can very carefully control the temperature. It's going to go in just like this, tilt forward, and I can close the lid on top of it. But before I do that, here's my potassium chloride, which I've baked in the oven to remove any water. I'm just going to put a bunch of this down in there. And now on top of the potassium chloride, I'm going to stuff in a nice big chunk of sodium metal. And that ought to melt together, and hopefully they'll react producing potassium vapor. So the furnace is set for 1400 Fahrenheit. I'll set that right there. And the metal just a little bit. Close it up, and now we wait. Guys, I think it actually worked. So I had it set at 1400 degrees and nothing was happening. I let it sit for over an hour and nothing happened. But I turned it up to 1550 and check it out. Some pieces of potassium came through. See that? It's actually working. So that appears to be all the metal that's going to come through. Let's have a look at this in here. Yeah, so definitely what the problem was is the temperature sensor is way down in there and so it was measuring the temperature at the bottom of the thing and so the potassium was getting stuck up in here and so I had to boost the temperature a little bit but let's actually open this up and uh, make sure this is actually potassium because uh, maybe I just distilled over the sodium so the first thing I'm going to do is pinch off a little bit of sodium let's put this into a bowl of water and see how sodium reacts Yep, okay, it exploded. Now let's pull off this bottle here. Hopefully we don't start a fire. Okay, looks like everything's cold, so we're not having a problem. Hmm, this is a problem. I can't get the cork out. Ah, got it. Okay. Let's see if I can grab one of these lumps of metal here. Fish it out. Oh, it's all melty. Okay, let's just... Ah, shoot. Since the metal seems to be a liquid, let's try sucking it up with a pipette. There we go. Squeeze out some of the oil. Now let's put it in the water. Hey, that's a bit more vigorous. Judging by the color of the flame though, I'd say I might actually have NAK. That would explain why it's still liquid. 
yeah. So I have a sodium potassium alloy here. Well, I, I guess I technically made potassium, I just have it contaminated with sodium. There we go. So I got it open, and uh, you can see what's inside here. There's some just pieces of salt, which appear to be just uh, potassium chloride mixed with sodium chloride. So, there you go. There was no metal in here, so everything that was in it must have boiled across. So, that's a good sign. I think I'm going to try this again, but instead of using the sodium, because the sodium appears to have uh, boiled across, I'm going to try with just magnesium, because magnesium should react with the potassium chloride about the same. But magnesium, of course, has a much higher boiling point. So, let's give that a shot before I give up on it. But yeah, I made NAK. That's a, that's a good start. So I just got done roasting this in the toaster oven. And uh, here's my chunk of magnesium. I'm going to cut pieces of this off. And this time, there's going to be no sodium in there. So I shouldn't form NAK. At least, that's the theory. There's my magnesium pieces. I'm going to add in some of this potassium chloride. And hopefully, those will react producing potassium metal the same way as I did before. Except without the sodium. Okay, so that seems to be a null result. The magnesium reaction did not produce potassium metal. Um, not entirely sure why, perhaps the magnesium is just too unreactive. Um, I'm going to try one more time with the sodium. I think if I put less material in and don't get it as hot, I won't get as much sodium coming across. So let's try that and see if I can get pure potassium metal. Otherwise, I did make NAK, so that's, that's something. Here we go again. I'm not going to fill it up quite as full this time. Perhaps that'll give me a better separation of the potassium and sodium. So there's my potassium chloride. Now, let's get out some sodium. Let's put that whole chunk in there, shall we? There we go. Let's see if that works. Let's see if we got anything. Let's warm up this tube to melt the metal again. There we go. Something's coming out. It's time to pull this off. Let's see what we got. Okay. There's the cork. Okay. Hey, it's solid. It's a good sign. Pull out a piece of that. It's really brittle, though. It's like coming apart in my tweezers. Maybe there is still some potassium. Maybe there is some sodium still in it. Let's uh, drop it in the water. That was more purple. Yeah. It's still got a sodium contamination, but it's uh, more pure this time. Let's drop in a bigger piece. It's coated in oil. Yeah, looks good. So there you have it. Sodium metal turned into potassium metal, at least mostly. So I know it might be difficult to produce potassium if you don't have sodium. That's why I was hoping the magnesium would work. But sodium is fairly easy to make using electrolysis. My friend Nighthawk and Light has done this several times and even used magnesium powder and sodium hydroxide to produce sodium metal. Electrolysis on potassium, however, is very difficult because potassium is soluble in potassium hydroxide and it's also even more reactive. So. You might be able to do it if you did it in an inert atmosphere, but that's not really something an amateur can do. Or at least it's 
more difficult. You might be able to use lithium to produce the potassium, the same way that I use the sodium, but again, you have to use a, another alkali metal. Therefore, Nighthawk and I are still brainstorming ideas of how to produce potassium metal directly. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. We'll see you next time.